Okay, and welcome to Stampscaping 101. We're going to do Apple Blossom Bridge. It's a video or a scene that I've done previously, but I only posted the intro to that video and I didn't post the full length because I did a couple steps uh, in that process of making that scene because it's all kind of an experiment um, that I didn't need to do that just kind of added on extra time. So I thought, okay, I'm just, I'll redo it again sometime and I don't know, I kind of forgot about it, and um, someone reminded me of it. So we're going to do it again here, and I'm not going to do the exact same composition. I thought I would kind of mix it up a little bit, but we'll stay with the same spirit of it, okay? Now this is the Covered Bridge 318i stamp right here, and... Um, Oh, there's a bridge, and there's some deciduous trees in the background. We have this road coming out here. I thought I would just stamp it out in the bottom. That's going to be a really simple composition right here with just this stamp, and I think a quote stamp up here, maybe some trees. Maybe we'll do the quote. I don't know. We'll see what we have room for, okay? So, I don't know, two or three stamp composition, but, okay, we're going to do make things interesting, or try to, and do it on the foil. I know what paint pens are going to look like on a white piece of paper and coloring the scene. I've done that a lot before, but I've really been experimenting a lot on the metallics. I like what the metallics um, kind of bring to the table in terms of kind of a dynamic end result, but I don't know what a lot of different media applications look like in terms of a process or the end result, so I'm playing around with those types of ideas here. Okay, so one of the things that I've found with the... Uh, foils is that they're either really dark, you know, like this. I mean, that's reflecting the, you know, something dark in the background. Uh, whatever that is. Could even be me, you know, like that, you know. But because it's a reflective surface, um, it's any value of light. It, it's even something reflective of light like that, like my studio lamps right here. So, that being said, I want to lighten up some areas in here, and preferably, preferably around the imagery, okay? But that's where, I don't know, a lot of this is an experiment. I want to see what these types of um, different applications of media look like on here and what works the best, okay? So, on this stamp right here, this covered bridge, there's this bridge right here, and I want that roof to be kind of lighter, all right? And same with the trees, so... You know, you don't have to, I think in the, my first um, um, experiment, I inked this up and I stamped it, okay, just in a dye-based ink that I could, you know, remove. I knew I'd be able to remove it, just so I can kind of get my bearings in here um, where I'm stamping it. But I'm finding that I don't really need to do that. I might take a note of it that the, uh, the stamp ends of around right here, okay? But what I'm finding is that you really don't have to be too careful at all. Once you stamp the uh, the impressions over it, it kind of all changes anyway. Okay, now I've been using this stamp, I don't know, a few times over this last, I don't know, maybe week or two? I don't know, I lose track of time these days. But um, So I know the road kind of comes around like this, okay? But like I said, 
you know, if you're a little bit off, or a lot off, you know, it's, I don't think it's going to matter that much, okay? We'll see, I don't know. Okay, so I'm just kind of getting a foundation of that going like that, okay? So it's going to look like this here. I know you can't see my image on this side, but I'm just kind of, you know, taking note of it. Because I'm going to be filling in here with additional paint pens anyways, you know, but I don't want to have to do it all from scratch. That's why I'm getting a, kind of a head start in terms of developing some of the lighter areas like this. All right, now this is on foil, and I've just applied this with a cotton ball. This is not going to dry. If I don't like that, I can just wipe it right off at any given time, okay? Uh, maybe not after it sets up and dries for two weeks, but, um, you know, you have plenty of time to make your adjustments. All right, now, a lot of times, let's leave the clouds out of it. I've been adding, like, templates like this, um, just a paper towel template and adding some um, textures down like that um, that would represent um, some clouds, okay? But I think what I'll do is I'll just freeform a little bit of texture in here like so, okay? Maybe that will represent um, kind of a cloud in itself. Maybe more like haze as opposed to kind of a more defined edge, you know, to a cloud. So just like something like that, all right? And why don't I do that in a couple different areas? Maybe I'll try streaking it across, okay? You can kind of look at those striations in the uh, sky. I forgot what uh, types of clouds those are. Maybe um, stratus clouds or something like that. Because this doesn't dry, if you put your finger in it, it'll come right off on your finger. So kind of be careful about that. And some of you have said, well, gosh, I would make a mess out of that. Well, you know, that's all kind of part of the, uh, the process here. I don't go into rubber stamping <laughs> I mean, the creation of a scene to keep things really, you know, uh, nice and tidy and, you know, kind of inky-free, kind of more the opposite. But you don't want to smear everything, so don't grab your thing like that, you know what I mean? I don't know, some people say, oh, they will. Well, you know, <laughs> you don't have to be too careful about it, okay? And as you can see, now see, this is what a lot of people would do this. What they tell me is that... Um, Oh my gosh, you know, I would just make a huge mess if it, that looks like, doesn't that look like a mess to you? But that's where a lot of people give up on things, you know, because they, it doesn't look like the end result, so they don't take into consideration kind of the preliminaries. I always say, you know, see it like um, in the development of a child or something like that. This is like the infant stages or something like that. What are you going to do? You know, you're not going to put like a, a three-year-old down because they're not... Um, developed and kind of mature or something like that, you know. Um, that's the same thing with a card. You have to kind of allow it to develop and give it time, you know, let it go through its stages of, uh, of its development and whatnot, okay? This does not, it's not some kind of expert piece of, uh, you know, ink application that I've done here, right? But, that's the beauty of it. I make these stamps so that they can just kind of, you know, things kind of just remedy themselves, you know, in, in some ways. You just kind of have to keep with it. The best scenes, almost, I don't know, it's almost, I don't know, there's a lot of instances where I've seen a lot of people's work. And oftentimes their best work are the ones where they've posted. I almost threw this scene away, you know what I mean? But they kept working with it and developing it, you know? Those are where you develop your best skills, or when something kind of has gone a little awry, or it's just kind of uncertain, and you have to think about it, and uh, kind of um, have to kind of work through the process of bringing something together. And that's when I find some of the best work by... Uh, card makers out there, or, you know, scene stampers. And that's when you get, you, you really develop your technique and kind of your thinking process. You can't really um, jump ahead in terms of that uh, process because it's only, 
it comes up when it comes up. You know, you can't kind of anticipate everything that's going to happen because we're doing different scenes all the time, different compositions, and especially when you're combining that with using different media or different combinations of media. So um, things always come up and uh, you can't always anticipate them, but you can always affect kind of your general philosophy and how you react to it, okay? All right, so there is my image like that, all right? It almost looks like a kind of a foggy, misty type of look with that white in the background, right? Take a look at that. See how that just all kind of comes together? I don't know. You know what I mean? Things aren't exact in terms of placement and whatnot, but you just stamp right over it like that. And, I don't know, it kind of develops its own character. All right, now this is the part where I just, you know, really don't know what I'm doing here um, because it's all kind of new to me, or it is. In terms of my usage of things like um, paint pens, okay, now I have this art, art, Artistro um, set of 42 colors right here, and it's very new. I, in fact, I haven't used any of these pens yet. I think I used my uh, my Sharpie um, paint pens before. And these work great too. These are water-based pens as well. But just the Artistro pack it just has so many more um, values of different um, color hues that I've uh, used before. Okay, now that impression right there, I made it in the Brilliance Black. It's a it's a ink. Uh, both of these pads right here that I've used on here so far are known to dry, pigment inks that are known to dry on non-porous surfaces, okay? But it doesn't mean that on this foil here they'll dry uh, very fast at all, relatively speaking, okay? They'll dry, but it might take a week or two. <laughs> you know, It might dry faster for you where you are, but uh, for me, I don't know. Pretty well dry to the touch in a week if I don't do anything to it. And um, pretty much completely dry in a couple weeks. I just, you know, everything doesn't have to dry in like a you know, second or two or whatever. Put it on the shelf and just let it dry and go back to it and, you know, you're ready to go. I do like, look how beautiful that impression stamps though. Look how crisp it is. <laughs> kind of the less porous the surface is. You know, it's not soaking into the paper, and the ink's not spreading. And this is a pretty thick ink with the uh, the Brilliance because it's a oil-based um, pigment ink, so it's almost like paint, but it goes on there really beautifully. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start adding some um, white gel pen marks into my trees back there. We're going to kind of... I could make it whatever color scheme. I could make it kind of more of a fall type of color scheme with reds, oranges, and whatnot. But I'm going to do this more kind of like a spring type of thing. It's not really going to be very accurate in terms of like apple blossoms, first of all. I don't think apple blo apple trees get this large anyway. But, uh, you know, we're just going to try to make something reasonably um, dynamic in terms of the, the look of it. Okay, this is a white paint pen. This is Meow's in one, but I believe it's still the same one as the Artistro, okay? Let me see. Let me get that flowing here. Yeah, I didn't shake this up. You always want to shake up uh, whenever you use these pens to get it uh, the opacity um, as um, thick as possible, okay? Because these do, um, the water and uh, pigment do separate in here. Um, you know, just like most paints do, okay? All right, so I'm kind of adding it down here. One of the things that I'm kind of conscious of is as I do this, I might be picking up some of the black ink from the image, okay, because it's wet, okay, so as I tap down in here, um, you know, there is a possibility that I will be picking up some of the, uh, the impression 
Okay, I'm going to try not to. Here's the thing that um, I really have to stay consciously aware of, or try to. I don't always do it, but it's where I put my hand that I'm holding the card with, okay? Um... This is the finger that I, you know, I tend to touch things with on accident, so I'm going to try to keep in mind um, what I'm doing here and uh, to not touch it. Now, I do have a couple other impressions to go on this. I'm going to, going to put in probably a quote stamp and maybe some overhanging tree ones if I have space, okay? I'll reassess when I get to that point. So um, that's why I didn't stamp it out um, ahead of time, because I... I need somewhere to hold on this card, okay, so I'm touching right down here. Okay, so can you see that little foliage that I'm kind of developing in here? I'm putting some kind of on the top surfaces um, in here of those uh, tree branch areas, the full limbs and whatnot, okay? I do create shading and highlighting. I spend, you know, a design like this, that this design might have taken three weeks to draw. I might have taken two weeks, or I don't know, a week just to develop my shadows in here. I try to, uh, in all my designs, I try to go with about three or four layers of textures, okay? And that's what gives uh, the Stampscape line so much body and uh, dimension is by uh, differing textures. There's a lot of designs out there that I see that use one layer, but I don't think that gives it the depth and the, uh, the spirit and body that um, I find is really necessary to certain types of images, especially things like trees. You really want to have trees. Trees are like a living entity with its own kind of characteristic and gesture to them. So at one time, they're kind of static and um, solid, but in other ways, it's like a dancer or something like that, trying to capture kind of the movement and spirit of a dancer in a drawing, you know, and that's where I think, um, you know, a design really has to uh, have those types of uh, things involved. So what I mean by that is you can see where there's um, a lighter area on the branch, or the bushes down here, but do you see where the textures are down here in terms of creating that shadow? So when I'm adding my highlights, I'm doing it in the lighter area. So you don't have to be, you don't have to have knowledge of tone and value. You just have to be observant and see where I have added those lighter areas. So like in this bush right here, I'll just add the highlights on the top surface of it like that. And I don't go into the shadows because that is the shadow area. So we add lighter highlights in the lights, okay? And that happens with everything. I do that on rocks, too, and uh, trees, uh, structures, like this bridge here. It has a darker and lighter area. So if you want to add color to it, let's say you're coloring with pens or something like that, you use your lighter ones on the light side of it, and you use your darker tones on the... Uh, the darker sides, usually the, uh, the vertical parts of uh, a design, okay? See how that's kind of coming alive? It's kind of giving a little bit of dimension to that bridge as well, okay? Now, as far as how many dots do you add? Do you add it equally in the same areas? You really don't. You just kind of have to Add a few like this. Now, one of the things that I do is when I add it, I kind of take a look at it from arm's distance, okay? And I take a look and see how um, the piece is looking overall. Because when we start adding these little details, oftentimes we're focused in on one little area. Then we move it here, and then we're focused in on that area. But it's really important to kind of get a good idea of the overall. So what you do is you hold it at at arm's distance, and you take a look at it and you see what um, uh, what the piece calls for in terms of additional marks, maybe using less and you know in another area or whatnot. I don't always get my answers 
Okay, sometimes I'm not certain myself. And uh, so I just add a few little dots at a time and then I move on, okay? Because you can always use add more. If you add too much, you can kind of wipe it off, but you're going to be wiping off the imagery as well, okay? So I try to just kind of avoid um, adding marks that uh, I'm not going to be happy with to begin with. But unlike, you know, something like brush calligraphy or something like that, you don't have to get everything in one fell swoop. You just kind of add a few little highlights, take a look at it, and add a few more, okay? If you add a thousand before you look at it, you know, it's going to be hard to change anything. But if you add, you know, three or four dots like that, take a look at it, you know what I mean? It's not going to be any big deal. It's not going to, uh, there's not going to be any big surprises kind of jumping out at you and, uh, you know, not looking good or take, kind of taking you to a point of no return. You're just adding a few little things at any given time. That's what a lot of people, um, I don't know, I find that as far as a technique goes, or just a general philosophy, there's kind of this notion these days of just kind of hurrying and everything wanting it to be um, done um, inherently, as opposed to kind of just developing things as it goes. Um, and I get it too, you know, sometimes we just want to know where we're going and exactly how to get there, but... Oh, I don't know. I think it's kind of fun just to kind of be within the spirit of um, kind of exploration or whatnot, you know. That's why I think it's a good idea to kind of see your um, crafting room not only as a, a place to make your masterpieces, but, but also as your kind of um, your lab for um, kind of personal growth. And to grow, you really have to kind of step beyond your kind of comfort zone. I do all the time. Um, for me, I'm doing it, like, on video, <laughs> you know what I mean? But, uh, I don't know, it's a kind of a good way to do it. Um, okay, see my little, um, fence posts like that, kind of illuminated like that. I don't know. It looks weird, I know. This is a different type of look here. You know, we're working with, you know, it's practically, I'm kind of, like, drawing on, um, like a mirror, in other words, or, I don't know, tin foil or something like that, chrome, you know, where it's, um, you know, a real different look. But I'll tell you one thing, though, um, it sure is fun. See things as kind of a, this is the way I look at things, too. Like I said, I th see this whole kind of process is kind of like going into the lab and kind of experimenting around. You might have your hypothesis, okay? But you have to be able to change your kind of uh, theories and whatnot as you go along and be able to change up, okay? Um, some of that comes with a little bit of experience, but you don't have to know where you're going, you know? Um, it's just kind of more of the philosophy of the whole um, thing. And I'd always recommend, like I said, especially, I really recommend people kind of stick with their pieces. Nothing's going to happen to you in terms of negative uh, results, you know, or something like that. It's like, oh my god, I shouldn't have taken the chance. Now my, you know, your life's not at stake. <laughs> yeah. Okay, but anyways, look at this now. It's kind of fun. It looks really interesting, though, I think, in terms of a surface, though, like that. I mean, that looks different to me than like that, you know. Okay, let's bring in a couple different pinks into the mix here. Um, something like a, like an apple blossom or cherry blossoms, I don't know what it might be. I used a lot of white in here, okay, let's look, like those little petals of a you know, some flowers on like a cherry blossom or something like this. All right, now I haven't used these pinks before, so let's get these, well, let me get these going at the same time to save a little time. So you just take your pen and, you know, the standard paint pen style with the uh, trigger release like this, okay? Maybe I already got that pink one going. This one's kind of more of a darker pink right here. I'm just triggering it like this. 
waiting for that flow to come down into the tip. Yeah. Don't get impatient and start going to ding to ding to ding to ding like a pogo stick though, okay? And we get going. I shook these up before the video, okay? I learned how to do that, you know. It's like, oh my gosh. I was doing it on screen and in one video. I thought that is so dumb. People don't want to see me like shaking up a bunch of stuff. But this is what it looks like before, okay? Uh, let me see if I can focus in here. Here it goes. Doesn't that look like a... It looks like a soda fountain drink or something like that. I really like it. I think it's really cool. But let's try a couple of these other pinks here first. Okay, now I'm accessing, I'm flipping this around. I'm working upside down a lot of times because I just have less ink here and I can put my hand here. If I'm coming at it from here, okay, I'm going to be smearing some of my, you know, imagery down here. And I don't want that. All right. So let's add that pink in here, okay. I'm going to use a little bit less, or maybe a lot less, than I did with the white, okay? You see it more as kind of like little accents? I don't know, that's actually, I'm, that, that was quite a bit in there. This pink is flowing like crazy here. Which is what we usually want out of uh, our paint pens, right? You know? But I almost can use a, a little bit of a slower flow. I think that's a little bit extreme. I think what I'll do is I'll layer it. I'll go with pink, white, then pink. Then I'll put some white over the top of it. I think that's pretty fun, though. I like that kind of little spot coloring in there. I don't know. Maybe it's more than spot. Dot coloring. That looks a little bit crazy. But this is where... I don't know, I didn't anticipate that, so here's what I'm doing. This is my remedy for it. A little bit too much, and just layer another, put another layer of white above that, okay? So things aren't always like a straight line. It's more of a circular process. You can return to other you know, colors and whatnot okay, during the process. better. Kind of breaking up some of those larger um, pink dots in there. Okay, all right. I don't know, I could probably use a little bit more. Need to break up that pink a little bit more. You can try all kinds of different color schemes too. Uh, greens, you know, just for spring, you know, and just in terms of um, creating um, kind of a, a springtime type of um, color scheme in there. Um, would look good. Let me try this green right here. I love having all these different values of green. You know, I have the, you know, multi-color set. It's not just having the colors, but it's having the different values of colors that I, I really appreciate. I like having a range of um, different values. I could have used more pastels, but I don't know. There's a decent number of pastels in there. I have a feeling these um, paint pens are being used by a lot of... Um, kind of adult coloring book um, practitioners and whatnot. So there's a lot of different options out there in terms of like things like gel pens and uh, alcohol pens now that are very, very, I don't know, economical and, you know, it's really good for us. You know, at some one time there was, you know, hardly any accessories out there for the stamper in terms of media and uh, different surfaces to work on. All right, this is taking a while for me to get this green one going. 
When I say I don't pogo stick it, I don't, you know, smash it down like that. You can kind of work that spring up and down. I'm just not even sure if I'm... Okay, I need to... Maybe I need to shake this one up more. Okay, pausing... Okay, I think I got this one going here. It's kind of like a... An olive... Well, like a light olive green, maybe? It's a little bit more of an earthy green. Okay, one of the things I found was I was shaking this like crazy to get this thing up. Don't shake it with the, uh, the cap off because I got some paint like on my arm here now. And I don't know, it went all over. I, for all I know, I have it on my face as well. But uh, I don't know, shake, shake with the cap on. I, <laughs> I just got it on my, I just scratched my nose right here and I had it on my finger. I don't know. I'll take a look in the mirror later. Yeah. I think it's coming right off my face. Okay. All right. So let's add this in in a couple little areas. There's some like bushes down here. I didn't, I don't think I used green in my first video at all. Little bushes off to the side here. It's hard for me to see some of the impressions um, on this surface right here because it's just so dark. So, you can always just kind of estimate, okay? And things don't always have to, it doesn't have to be kind of like a, like a coloring the, uh, within the, the lines or anything like that, okay? You just kind of, you just kind of winging it. To me, I have to get kind of used to it too, you know? See, I'm putting some of this up here, the greens, like maybe there's some um, with those blossoms within the, uh, the branches. There's um, some leafy areas kind of growing as well. So that's what this kind of represents. Um, the green isn't as light a value as the white, so it's not showing up as much as that. And it's, um, I don't know, not as hot of a color as uh, the pink, so it just kind of blends in there a little bit. See that? When you look at it like that, it's you know, it's kind of crazy. It's like pointillism or something like that. But, you know, this is kind of more of the, uh, the viewing distance, and you really can't make, you know, kind of can make out the, the green very easy, can you? It's only when you get kind of closer, but, you know, that's kind of the viewing distance right there. So anyways, it's really fun like that, you know, to play around with these different types of colors and that, you know, this is kind of a, I don't know, it's, it, it blends in. It's not a hot green or something like that. So for, for this, I think that works out the best. Okay, now let's add in some additional imagery in here. I, I might play around with some things too. Like, um, I don't know, I was thinking about, I don't know, it, I don't know it. I, I was thinking about this one. I think new beauty meets us at every step in all of, in all our our wanderings. John Muir. That one's a good one. Heaven is under our feet as well as over our heads. I don't have enough sky in here. I think I'd want to make it really beautiful up here in the sky with some like sunlight or something like that coming through for that one. But I, th I think I like this one too, just in terms of the bolder text as well, the bolder font. Um, sometimes if I stamp something a little bit too thin on top of this dynamic surface, it doesn't show up as much. Um, so I think I'll go with this one. I think the, you know, the, like I said, the, uh, I think the, the quote um, goes very well with the scene as well as just kind of the, uh, the weight of this font right here. And this is off Scenic Sentiments. Uh, sheet three, it's this one right here. New beauty meets us at every step in all our wanderings. I like that idea too because it's, you know, step, you know, it, it's a bridge here. It's a visual lead in. You know, we can kind of walk um, through the bridge, you know, so it kind of fits that um, uh, theme very nicely. 
I've been pretty good about getting um, kind of a decent impression. <laughs> I don't have a, I don't use a, a stamp positioner, so I, I really need to get this in one, you know, chance. Well, actually, I don't have anything up there, so if it didn't stamp out right, I can just wipe it off. I should just do that just to show you, but you can stamp out this brilliant sink, and uh, if you don't like it, you can just kind of wipe it right off and, you know, start over again. Okay, now, see how this is kind of bowed? I want to flatten this out a little bit like that, okay, before I want to stamp it out. And I'm going to go, let's go a little bit lower on here, okay? Because I think I want to have some overhanging tree limbs in the scene as well. Get a good, nice impression pressure. you got to be kind of definitive with it, though. Don't kind of lay it down, then pick it up. Like I said, I mean, if you touch down and you don't like it, you can always wipe it off. And kind of make sure you don't slide it around, you know, when you're lifting it off either. Otherwise, you're going to get a kind of smeared impression, okay? All right, so that one looks pretty good. Um, I don't know, I think it reads really well. Okay. I really like that white on top of the... Uh, I, I guess we could do it in black as well. I didn't really think about that, but um, that white kind of matches, you know, the uh, the theme of the uh, the piece, too, with all that white in there as a foundation and whatnot. Okay, now, here's those overhanging tree limbs. I'm almost wondering if I should stamp this out in white or if I should do it in black. The black will certainly frame things a little bit more. Uh, let's go with the black. The white could look very elegant, though. If you were doing something like a like an anniversary card or something like that, I would maybe suggest doing it in white. You know, these branches right here. Or maybe, I don't know, maybe even silver. I think that would look really interesting. Especially if it was a silver anniversary or something like that. But yeah, just in terms of a kind of a nice, elegant card. Okay, let's see. I, I need to make sure that I don't stamp over my my quote. I think I almost smeared this one right here because I'm kind of I hate how this um, thing bows like that. I kind of counter bowed it to begin with, you know, before I started stamping this scene. So maybe I should have counter bowed it a little bit more. Okay, let's go for a couple impressions like that on this side. Okay, so it kind of frame it off a little bit like that. It's hard to see it though, huh? White shows up a little bit more. It just depends on what's being reflected off of the surface too. Um, I don't know. It's an ever-changing surface, you know, with that with that mirror, because anything that's being reflected in here shows. So when, it really makes this really fun to do. It makes it awfully hard to photograph, though. You know, if you're going to share your pieces like on uh, Facebook or something like that, it's really hard to get a good photograph. So I don't know. With some people, I just suggest that you take a video of it and kind of tilt it a little bit. Then, you know, upload that file as opposed to the still photo. All right, so here we go right here. Okay, so here's branches like that. It's really hard to show that. I could see it from, let me see if I could get the right angle. Eh, it's kind of like that. <laughs> okay, let's see. I need something uh, down at the base here. Uh, maybe I'll use, um, yeah, I'll use these reeds here. I'm tempted to do it in two colors, like white and black. Oh boy. All right, let me try to get some of this off of here. I think I need to go with the white first. I don't think the black will show up. Or the white, I don't think the white will stamp over black, but I, I think I could stamp black over white, I'm not sure. White might show right through. I don't know. That's 
that's where all this stuff is really an experiment. I mean, I, I guess I could have done that for the, the, the leaves as well. I don't know, I could try white leaves over the top of black. Let's see how this works out down there. Let's try white over black up here in a little area maybe, and I'll try black over white down here with the reeds. Okay, so it looks like that. All right, now I don't have this way up here in the scene. I kind of have it coming from below like this. Okay. Ah! I think I moved it a little bit. Yeah, it's not too bad. I moved it like a millimeter or so. Boy, that white surely shows up though, doesn't it? I guess it stands to reason that it would, because I mean, like that quote, st you know, stands out just fine like that. I don't know, that white looks really good. I think it would have been too much up there. So I, I, I don't know. I think we need it in both. White and black, if we're going to do it. I think, well, I don't know. You know what you could do, too, is you can do something like, well, maybe you can't. I was going to say you can throw on some embossing down here, so you can boss those foreground images, which would kind of be cool because they're kind of coming out and um, dimensional in such a visually dimensional piece. I don't know. If any of you try that, you'll have to tell me how it works out. Okay, so here's the black. So let me see if I can layer this. Let me see if I can flatten this out. And I'm not trying to stamp it right over the white. I'm, you know, I'm kind of altering my position of this so that it just looks like another layer, preferably closer to us. If it just kind of mucks everything up, then you know it wasn't a successful experiment. I can't tell. Okay, the black shows over the white. I, I do believe. Okay. It's hard to say, though. Yeah, the black is in front of it, dimensionally speaking. Okay, let's go over here. Nice and straight. You have to be really careful that you don't kind of skew your images. Okay, yeah, not too bad. See that like that? It kind of, it gets it to blend in a little bit more, don't you think? Like that. Especially into that like that area like that. Okay, let's do the same thing. I think we need a uh a leaf texture up there. Now, um there's other colors of brilliance too. Like maybe that would look better in like a green or something like that, huh? But I don't have that, so I don't have uh, too many different colors of brilliant ink. I do want to get some more, though. Um, in fact, I just ordered a, some for someone else um, that I'm shipping off a, a consolidated parcel to Canada because some of the, the locations that are listing it there are, I don't know, like one pad's like $20 or something like that, something crazy. But after looking at all of the different colors, uh, it occurred to me that I'm kind of limited with, I don't know, black, white, and a couple of different metallics. Uh, I need to try some uh, different colors out there. And hopefully, Brilliant Sinks will be around for a while, but I don't know. They're kind of an older line, so I think they've been forgotten in many ways. Okay, let me see how this goes here. So, so, I think it looked better with the black over white. I don't think it looks bad, though, but it's uh, a little bit uh, or, well, actually quite a bit, it's quite a bit translucent, so the black is showing through. If the black is showing through, I'd want it to show it through a little bit more, though. Um, you know, so that this white is kind of more recessed. But I'll show you what I'll do with that. You just gotta roll with the things, you know, and kind of develop things as you go along. Okay, so what I'm talking about is like right here. 
see the black really shows through those um, areas right here. This one is where it's stamped without, you know, a black branch behind it. That's why that one looks pretty good. But over here it gets a little mucked up with that uh, tree behind it. But, but, you know, overall, kind of interesting. Okay, so here's what I'm going to try here in response to, you know, that over there. We have our white pen, right? So let's go and let's try to define some of these leaves a little bit more. All right. Have to get it at this angle right here. Where that quote stamp really stands out. Okay, so I'm just going here and I, don't know, I can actually color some of these leaves. I'll just kind of highlight them, kind of to bring some of them out in the background. Yeah, it gives them a little bit more dimension. Actually, I think that looks pretty good. It gives my uh, white leaf impression, leaves, that's the name of the stamp, a little bit more dimension within that space. Okay, so that's what that looks like now. Okay. It looks kind of weird like that, but like I said, this is at arm's distance and how that looks from here. Okay. All right, so let's finish this off here with um, a few more of these highlights here. It's really fun. I don't know. It's. I'm trying to think of the uh, kind of the, uh, the experience of doing something like this. It almost... It almost feels like I'm doing like a coloring book type of thing when I'm kind of doing these little dotting kind of process right here. But unlike a coloring book, it's, you know, I, I don't feel confined or something like that. And it's kind of a composition of your own making, too. So there's kind of that reward in itself. And then plus, when we're doing something like this, I mean, there's just not going to be any other piece in the world that looks like yours, you know, when you're doing that. So, um, I don't know. It's all, I don't know, it's all fun stuff. All right, now, one of the things that occurred to me when I was doing that white up here, um, we have the greens down here, and I have these leaves in here. You know, I've done some white, but um, why don't we layer it a little bit and try to add, you know, some of this green up here on some of these leaves. So it's kind of like a little dot or whatever, you know, just a little accent in here with some of that green. It doesn't have to make sense um, from, a, a, say, a realistic standpoint. It just has to look good from a design standpoint, okay? All right. Okay, so you might not be able to see it there, but there's all those green little dots and what that looks like from here is like something like that. I guess we could kind of give a little bit more continuity to it too. I mean, we can say that this kind of branch up here is, you know, the same type of um, tree that's in the background, so I can put a few little blossoms up here in these within these branches right there. So that's kind of fun, like that. I tell you what, here too, just thought about this too, is I can put kind of little, little dots like this, you know. What does that represent? It's like little petals, you know, of the blossoms kind of in the wind, okay? Kind of just falling off the... Uh, tree limbs like this. Put some in front of the bridge too, like that. Put some over things. I don't want to put things over the uh, the words, okay, because that will, uh, you know, it could look like a, a dotted eye is out of place or something like that. But, uh, yeah, something like that. Gives it a little bit of motion, you know, in terms of the falling types of uh, spirit in here. Doesn't that like little confetti or something like that too? So we're just going like this. And it's falling down like that. 
So, all right, let's take a look at this if we can. I know it's kind of hard to tell, but I don't know. You can see where I've laid down the white in here, okay? It's not as reflective and whatnot, but that white underneath that bridge makes that area stand out a little bit more. Otherwise, it would be black on kind of this darker area like that. You can barely see my branches right there, okay? You know, if I kind of hold it like that. But, that, so that's why I put laid down that white in the background there. I wouldn't need to be exact. I mean, if some white went over here and over here and there was less here, you know, it would look fine. The big thing is, is uh, I just wanted to bring out that uh, the bridge, especially and some of those trees. If some of the white went up there, that would be fine too. You know, it would look like clouds in the background or something like that. So don't worry about that. You know, if you're doing this kind of preliminary kind of toning down there, I, you know, I, I probably could have put a little bit more over here and that little whole area of the creek would have stood out a little bit more, but we can just say, well, it's just in shadows from, you know, the lighting coming from above or something like that, okay? So, and you just, you just uh, define the reasons after the fact, you know, because that already exists like that. So, anyways, the word uh, stamp is kind of a nice little graphic complement. I'm having a hard time kind of focusing in on this. Let's focus down here because this is like a mirror, um, but, uh, anyway, there we go, like that. Different looks, kind of more of an obscured kind of, um, coloring like that, but it really stands out when you focus in like that, just how busy it is, right? It looks fairly dimensional, I think, though. But that's what it is at kind of arm's distance. It's a little bit more mellow, and that's where the distance that most people would be looking at this piece from. But, you know, you kind of come a little bit closer like that and closer, and I think, this is what I always say, you can reward your viewer um, for um, further inspection. If someone looks up at your piece really close up, you reward them by having extra little details in the, uh, in the piece for them to enjoy. Okay, so anyways, Apple Blossom Bridge, hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, drop me a note in the comment section, or if you've tried um, some different types of uh, things like paint pens on your foils and whatnot, and if you've come up with any really uh, beneficial types of tips for me, please list them in the comment section. Or if you're having any troubles with any part of this entire process, just uh, let me know. Or if you've done a piece... Um, and I don't know, there's something that, uh, that you, you ran into some little hurdle or something like that. And what I always recommend is uh, for people to um, take a photograph of it and send it to me. I'm not like a, you know, sending it in for um, like a professional art critique for getting into the museum. You're just sending it in, you know, like for, you know, pointers and tips and whatnot, you know, to, uh, to finish the scene off or to um, kind of remedies for certain things. And I'll let you know what I think. Okay, so anyways, thanks again for watching. Hope you enjoyed it.